Hello everyone, my name is Eric Ratamero and I work in the research IT department at the Jackson Laboratory, which is a nonprofit research institute based in Bar Harbor, Maine. And today I'm going to give you a quick introduction to Git, uh, which is a version control uh, tool that's mainly used for code. And for that, I'm going to be using GitHub Desktop. So here I already have GitHub Desktop page open. It's just desktop.github.com. Um, so this is just a program that makes it easier to start using Git. Um, so the first thing is you just download, install, and configure it. And it's going to ask you for a GitHub account, which I already have. You might need to open one. So GitHub is going to be your remote repository for your code. So if you write code locally, you can push it to GitHub. And then if you need the code in a different computer, or if your computer dies, you know that your code is safe on the GitHub servers. So I have already done the installation and the configuration. Uh, I already signed in, I'm, I'm ready to go. So I'm going to go to GitHub desktop. So this is the thing you see after you have done the basic configuration and installation and everything. In my case, I already have a bunch of repositories because I have been using GitHub for a very long time. So your, uh, your repository section here might be empty, but don't worry about it. That's going to change very quickly. So I'm going to start by creating a tutorial repository just so I can show you the basics. So I'm going to click on that. And it's going to do some stuff in the background. It's going to send stuff to github.com, which is their servers. And eventually you get here. So before we go ahead with that, I'm just going to show you that if I go to my GitHub account, I now have this desktop tutorial repository, which is just at github.com slash my account name slash desktop tutorial. And that's the only thing it has. It has one file that is called readme.md, which has this content here. And that's it. That's all it has. So if we go back to GitHub desktop, you will see that we are currently in the repository desktop tutorial, which is what I'm using. We are currently in the branch master. I'm going to talk a little bit more about branches in a little bit. And you don't need to fetch origin. I'm going to talk about origin a little bit as well. So the repository is essentially something like a folder where you have your code. And if you have any data you need to have with that code, it will be bundled together as well. That repository will have a page on GitHub. So if I had more files in this repository, they would also be listed here. If I had, you could have folders inside this repository and they would be folders here. I could click on the folders and get into the folders and see the files in there. So it's it's just a, a bundle of things for a specific project. Branches are where you can do work in parallel, for example. So in this case, we are at the master branch. We are going to change that in a little bit. We are going to start doing stuff in different branches. So the idea is that if you're doing stuff on a different branch, you have a separate copy of the, the whole project where you can do changes. And then when these changes are ready, you can put those changes back into, in this case, the master uh, branch of, of your code. Um, Origin is what uh, GitHub normally calls the remote uh, copy of your code. So you have a local copy that's stored on this computer I'm using, and you have origin, which is this. It's, what, it's what's on their servers. So their servers are the remote copy of that, and it's normally called origin. Okay, so following their tutorial here, they asked us, ask us to create a branch. So that's what I'm going to do. And it's always a good practice to anytime you're doing changes to your code, first you do changes in a new branch and you test things on that new branch. And then when that everything is tested, everything is working as intended, then you put them back into the master. So here I'm going to create a new branch and I'm just going to call it um, change branch. So it's just going to be a branch where I'm going to be doing some changes. So I'll create that. 
And now you see that the current branch is change branch. So now everything I do on my code is going to be applied to this specific branch. So whatever I do now, the master copy of that code is going to be unchanged. It's going to be safe somewhere else. It's not going to be the thing we are actually editing here. So now it asks me to edit a file. So I'm going to open an editor and this will just open, in my case here, it's going to open VS Code, but it might open Notepad or whatever you use. And you see that I'm operating on my documents folder. Here I am on Windows. If you are on a Mac, it's going to be a different uh, path. But essentially you're operating on your GitHub folder inside documents. And there you have a desktop tutorial folder, which is the, the folder where I am actually doing stuff on this specific repository. And here I'm editing readme.md, which is the only file that's there. And it asks you just to write your name on line six, save it and head back to get that desktop. So I'm actually going to write my name on line seven because I'm a rebel. So I'm just going to say, hi, I'm Eric. Nice to meet you. Um, so I saved it. I'm just going to close this. And here you see that it tracks the changes we've made. So it immediately shows me that, oh yeah, you've added an empty line and you've added the line that says, hi, I'm Eric, nice to meet you. So the changes I've made here are just on the local file on my computer. And because this file was being tracked by, by GitHub desktop, by the program here, uh, it knows this file exists. It keeps an eye on that file and it sees, oh yeah, you've changed that file. So the next step here is um, making a commit. So a commit is essentially the kind of like atomic operation of change in Git. So every time you make a change, you should bundle that as a commit and the change can be in multiple files, for example. So if you had to change multiple files to add a new functionality to your code or uh, small, smaller changes. Um, every time you make some meaningful change, you should bundle that as a commit. So a commit, as you can see here on the bottom left, you need to have a summary that is just plain text. You're just going to say what is in this commit. And if you want to have a longer description, you can have a longer description. So in this case, I'm just going to say added a nice greeting to read me, which is what I did. So here you give a meaningful description of what the change that happened was. And when I press commit, what happens is that now this branch is uh, essentially ahead of the master. It, it has a change the master doesn't have. So just making the change and saving a file is not enough for Git to recognize that as a change you actually want to, uh, I mean, that's why it's called the commit, a change you actually want to commit to. So you make a change, you save, and then you need to make a commit to say, this is a change I actually want to make, go ahead and save it. So now the next step is you, as I said, you have this change locally on your computer. If, if it's something that you're finally happy with, you can push that change to GitHub, to the remote server. So in this case here, you can just press publish branch. And essentially that's going to do what's called the push in Git. So it's going to take your local version. It's going to send it to the server. And now, for example, if I refresh here, you see that here I'm looking at master. So I'm looking at this branch and you see that there are no changes. I can change which branch I'm looking at by clicking here. And if I change it to change branch, you'll see that the version I have here has the changes. So the changes I've made have been committed and they have been pushed to the server. So this is on the server under change branch. So now the next step to that is after you're ready, after you have tested everything, after everything is working as intended, you want to make sure that this change you have on this specific branch is actually on the master, which is where you keep kind of like the canonical version of your code, the version that is the nicest, cleanest, most updated version of your code. So the way you do that is by creating something, 
something called the pull request. So a pull request is when you say, I have these changes in this branch. These changes are now ready to go to this other branch, which is normally master. So here I'm going to click on open pull request and that's going to open a new window on your browser. So pull requests happen only on the web. So you cannot do them purely inside um, GitHub desktop, which is the program. So here, um, essentially a pull request would, would try to merge things from one branch to another. So in this case here, I'm merging things from the branch change branch to the branch master which is what I want to do. I want to take the changes I've made and put them back into master. And GitHub has an automated process to figure out if uh, those are changes that can be merged easily or not. Normally, most of the things you will do will be able to be merged pretty easily if there are no conflicts with things that already exist. So normally, if you have that situation, it will tell you it's able to merge and these branches can be automatically merged. So if there are conflicts between the new things and the old things, then these need to be resolved manually. So you need to make the changes manually. You need to figure out what are the bits of the new thing and the bits of the old thing that need to be changed so that they can be glued together. So in this case here, it's easy. Um, uh, I can merge them automatically. So I'm just going to keep the same name here. I did a nice greeting to readme, which is a change I did. You can just press create pull request. So that is going to create a request as it says. So it's going to say, I want to merge these things. And if you're working with multiple people, for example, normally you have multiple people who would create pull requests. They would say, I have a new change that's ready. And we would have, you would have fewer people who are able to actually merge these pull requests. So normally like the senior developers would be able to look at what junior developers are doing, for example, in terms of new features and new pull requests, look at them, see, okay, these things make sense. I can merge these or these things don't make sense. We need to change this again. And I'm not going to accept this pull request. So in this case here, it's just me. So I'm just going to click on merge pull requests because I know what I've done. And I'm going to confirm merge. And that's it, they're merged. So now if I go back to the main page in this, in this repository, you see that now master also has the change I've made. So it also has that extra line there. So this is the most basic uh, workflow you have on Git. You, you just make changes in a different branch. You, when these changes are ready, you create a pull request normally to master and you merge that. And now I have a, a master branch here that has the changes I've made to a different branch. This is just a very, very, very introductory view at Git and using GitHub Desktop. So now from here, what you could do, for example, is create a new repository if you have something you want to work on and you would just give it a name. So here, for example, if I just do a test repo, um, I'll skip the description. I normally never skip the license because having a license in your project is always very important. Here in this case, I'm just going to pick the MIT license. Um, but if I create that, you see that now I'm working on test repo. I'm working on the branch master. I have not published this repository to GitHub yet. So it doesn't exist remotely on the server. So it only exists on my machine. So if I press that, um, and I want to go to github.com with this name. And in this case, I'm keeping it private, but you could just make it public. Um, and if you're working on multiple organizations, you can choose in which the organization it goes. I have multiple organizations. You, if you are just beginning, you wouldn't have any organizations. But if I click on publish repository, after it goes through the whole process, it, this is now remotely on the server as well. So if I, Go back to my account here and I look at my recent activity. You see that now I have test repo and test repo has just a git attributes file and a license file. I haven't added a readme. I haven't done anything, uh, but this is essentially how you would begin, right? So now you will go back here. 
You could, for example, open this repository on your file explorer. You could create files here, and then they, you would add these files to commit, and you would push that commit normally to a new branch, and you would go through the whole process of creating a pull request and merging again. So that's the basic workflow for Git using GitHub Desktop. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to the Jackson Laboratory YouTube channel. We've been recording a bunch of those introductory videos to different tools. And other than that, thank you for watching and thank you for your attention.